Hello everyone, here we are post eclipse season. And so now what? This has been a question I've literally been asking myself all day today. And once I kind of let go, I instantly had the download of where we are being guided to shift our focus at this time. And so first I want to begin this with a reflection back to the year 2020, specifically the great conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter and Aquarius. And this great conjunction happened on the December solstice or winter solstice here in the Northern hemisphere. And it was at zero degrees of Aquarius. And so what came through just right away with that number zero was this vibration of infinite possibilities, a blank canvas, and just this kind of almost like eternal flow, right? When we think about a circle, there's no beginning or no or an ending. However, this it was marking a beginning into stepping into a new way of being collectively and individually. And this new way of being would be better serving to our communities as well as the planet as a whole in our experience here. And so we were being guided and we're still within this, this cycle, right? This is still like, we're just at the beginning of this, um, but we are being guided to really get clear of what our legacy is going to be, what we seek to um, achieve for the future and for future generations. What are the foundations that we are creating on and how do we create these foundations with a high vibration of compassion, of love, of um, just wellness and just very strong foundations. And so that in itself to me spoke intentional community and just support for one another. It was very Aquarius energy, right? That humanitarian, you know, I'm going to be an individual within this collective and we all can be unique in our own way. That was what was coming through with that Jupiter and um, Saturn conjunction. And it was really powerful because Jupiter and Saturn actually have completely opposite energies where Jupiter wants to expand and grow and Saturn wants to contain and restrict for their own, you know, specific reasons. And so I like that both of them came together in this very powerful way on the day of the solstice to really also emphasize alignment in the dualistic perspective that we embody here on this earth and that is a part of our life uh, on this planet. And so I really enjoyed that. And this was right, this happened right before, you know, we even knew about coronavirus. So there was a lot of optimis optimism in the air. And so that is, that is the really the starting point for where we are going essentially because this great conjunction began two cycles. First, on a greater cycle, it's a 200-year cycle of Saturn and Jupiter meeting in the element of air, right? So big ideas, communication, um, and, and so forth, right? And then on a smaller scale, a smaller cycle, this began a 20-year cycle of Jupiter and Saturn conjunction and that intention over the cycle lasts for a duration of 20 years, right? So at its at its least um, would be a 20 year influence, but at its greatest is really like a 200 year influence. So it's a really, really potent time. And so moving forward to year 2021, because that conjunction happened at the year of 2020, year 2021, there was a focus on breaking free of old foundations, right? So since we knew we were being guided to create a new foundation, to really step into our passion projects, to really be of service in some way that will better serve, right, our communities and help each other and lift each other up, right? First, we have to really tear down what isn't working. So the year 2021 was a whole year dedicated to tearing things down essentially. So this was the, um, when we think about the numerology of that year, that was the number five, right? And so that is literally a point of conflict or a year of conflict in pushing ourselves or evolving through or passing through a threshold, right? Really shedding some, some layer of, um, just layer of skin and for some reason is what came through, right? So there's breaking free of old, old foundations, 
breaking free of limiting beliefs. And then there was another little side thing happening of divine counterparts coming together, making those connections so that um, they will be working together essentially in the coming year and so forth, right? And so there was a meeting within that year of 2021 of a lot of um, people that I've connected with and myself meeting divine their divine counterpart, right? And, and it was that meeting and just really kind of navigating that energy and how and really connecting and understanding how our paths would move together um, in parallel but not really like you know we're it's not a codependency kind of thing but i've talked about that a lot and i'm sure i'll talk about it again in the future and so the main influence as far as the astrology with year 2021 was the saturn square uranus right and that was between aquarius which was fixed ideas and taurus which is like fixed you know stability fixed security fixed comforts breaking free of those and then we had the venus retrograde in capricorn which is a lot of had to do with that divine counterpart saga. So moving to year 2022, this is a six year. So there is that vibration of the number six, which is harmony, alignment, and movement forward. And so when we moved into this six year, year six, I really, and this stuff just all started flowing. I really started connecting to what it means to be your or to merge with your divine presence your i am presence your highest self like what does that mean who how do you see yourself who are you becoming right this is going to really integrate with your divine purpose with the legacy you're creating the foundation you're building and so that has been the focus since 2022 from my perspective here right not everyone's going to be focusing on this but if you resonate with my cosmic climates and everything that i've been teaching and sharing you would have heard this before and this is something this is possibly i'm sure a part of your purpose or it's really calling you into this vibration and so beginning with um okay so with the year 22 the 2022 the vibration of six like i said there's alignment harmony and movement forward and the main theme of this year is an integration with your divine self an integration or embodiment of your divine self right and so the divine self is yourself at the highest expression your higher self or your god self or your i am presence however you look at it right and so i began talking about the seasonal intentions for integration which aquarius what was the main theme what were we working with and naturally, like I said, this all kind of flows in, but we were being guided to work with the sun and the lunar cycles. And so when though the sun and the moon come together for a new cycle as a new moon, that is when I really felt like this intention was initiated, right? Or we were being driven to focus on it or shifting our focus. And so with Aquarius, that focus was to create your blueprint and envision what you desire and seek to achieve for your future and of course future generations so there was a lot of like i feel like reorganizing and um just kind of thinking about or um gathering information regarding what you are seeking to achieve like laying out your blueprint and getting really clear with where you are going for the future and there is a focusy on a, a focusy a focus on your legacy and the foundation that you're creating so getting really really clear with aquarius it definitely is that visionary aspect or vibration so we were really tapping into those visionary qualities of aquarius so looking in the the far the far future like the far side future so then with Pisces, the focus shifted to visualizing yourself and really activating that third eye chakra and expanding through activating the third eye chakra, we were being guided to expand beyond our boundaries and to really, again, get clear to some sort of degree, what does my divine self really look like or even feeling into that? What does my divine self feel like? 
how does my divine self connect with others on a very um, emotional, ethereal level? Um, and so really doing some visualization techniques to start to really draw down that connection to your divine self. So then moving forward, we are we were in airy season. We moved to airy season. And the focus there was standing strong within your I am presence. So once you had an understanding of the blueprint you were you're creating and where you see yourself going in the future, and then visualizing how you seek to feel or how that divine self feels, and making even that connection with your divine self through that third eye and even the crown, right? So I definitely felt with the Aquarius, we were definitely activating that crown chakra, then moving to the third chakra. And with Aries, Aries focus was standing strong with how you feel or how you see that divine presence, right? Standing in your divine presence, taking risks, um, and also speaking your truth, just standing up for yourself, essentially. Now moving into tour, or now that we're in Taurus season, the focus is how do I sustain this connection to my divine self, my highest self, right? So what can I consume to sustain that connection, that vibration? How do I nourish my divine self? What does my divine self seek for nourishment? And I shared a, a self um, blessing ritual that really was an initiation of fully connecting with that divine self. And now that we're moving into Gemini season, the focus is what does your divine self sound like? How does your divine self communicate? And a focus on connecting and engaging as your divine self or your I am presence. And also, again, there's the element of speaking your truth and sharing information or connecting with information that is that is that divine presence that is that speaks to that divine presence and so um if this really resonates with you definitely um leave a comment and let me know what your thoughts are your perspective your experience i would love to connect with you on this thank you so much for supporting me if you want to dig deeper into your divine purpose, divine self, how to make this connection or where this is going on in your chart, definitely comment um, or message me and we can set up a time to dig deep via an astrology reading. Also, I want to say too, um, when we're in these um, seasons, right? So we're entering in Gemini season, that particular area of life, which is indicated by the um, you know that so where Gemini rules in your house the area of life ruled by Gemini um which is indicated via your birth chart sorry I know I'm rambling um that particular area of life is where this influence is going to be the strongest and that is also an area of life that will be supportive of this process or that seasonal intention so again if you want to dig deeper into that definitely message me um, or comment below and we can set that up for you. So I am really ex excited to see how Gemini season goes. I'll be sharing a lot with you guys. So thank you as always for your support and I'll talk to you again soon.